I was taught that racism was an either or proposition. You were either racist or you weren't. And if you were racist, you were bad and mean. You intended to hurt people. And if you were not racist, you were good and nice and warm and friendly. Racist were those people on the television that dragged people from lunch counters during the 60s. Racists believe in Jim Crow laws. I didn't believe in those things. I was against those things. Therefore, I was not racist. So it became this very simple either or good, bad. And I think that's actually the root of virtually all white defensiveness on the topic of racism. If it's an either or and you suggest that I have any implicit bias or that that implicit bias is driving my responses and my behaviors, I'm going to hear you saying, you're a bad person and I'm going to need to defend my very character. So while it looks like a positive adaptation of racism for it to have it become bad, we always have to ask ourselves, how does it actually function? And in practice, it's functioned to make it virtually impossible to talk to the average white person about the inevitable implicit bias that they've absorbed, because what we hear is, you said I was a bad person. We just have to get rid of this idea that it's either or and start to understand it as inevitable. Schools in Hollywood are, are two of our most fundamental institutions that reproduce racial inequality. Hollywood pumps out relentless, consistent, narrow representations of people of color that then shape teachers who are predominantly white and then in turn uh, schools reproduce inequality through curriculum, through textbooks, through policies, through practices, and through the unintentional, often implicit bias of a very homogeneous teaching force. Homogeneity, it's not a problem because white individual teachers are bad, but that homogeneity leads to consistent blind spots. So implicit bias is real. Uh, it manifests in practices, it's measurable, we can prove it, and it's not conscious to the person doing it. Well, the key is never to separate ourselves from it. We've got to start with just accepting that we have it, and rather than then deny it, work to identify it. As a starting place for teachers, it, it, there's the personal work. You cannot be complacent, you cannot exempt yourself, you cannot assume you're fine. You know, I recently um, heard a talk and it, I found it to be riveting and powerful. And he said, if you want to know how I'm doing uh, around race, don't ask me, ask my students of color. Ask their parents, ask their families. It's that sense of accountability. It's building trust.